Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, my name is John Coonrod. I'm going to facilitate today's meeting and I'm going to turn on some slides. Let's see. So uh, today's session is has two featured um, subjects. We're going to learn about a recent campaign that our colleagues in Nigeria have carried out in order to mobilize particularly youth participation, but uh, just to generate awareness throughout uh, Nigeria's recent campaign. So we'll be hearing from that. And we'll also be hearing from a number of youth leaders. Um, I'm going to start the meeting with a brief introduction to the movements for those of you who are new. Uh, then we'll hear from several uh, youth leaders, leaders of youth-led organizations and activists in our movement who, unlike me, are young, under 35. And uh, then uh, we'll also, after hearing from uh, uh, Mr. Maspalma Ibrahim uh, and on the progress in Nigeria. Then we'll also have a chance to just hear our general activities and upcoming events in the movement worldwide. So thank you all for joining. Um, for those of you new to the movement and Anne, can you give me a thumbs up? Are the slides appearing? Oh, good. Phew. Sometimes they don't. Oh, here. So the uh, this movement for community-led development was launched in 2015 at the Sustainable Development Summit at the United Nations. It comprises 1,500 um, civil society organizations across more than 30 countries um, and more than 70 international NGOs. Um, uh, the Hunger Project has up until now. Uh, and will continue to provide major support for the Secretariat. However, we're going through a big transition uh, because we want to expand. We want lots of organizations to support us. And I'll be giving an update on that at, at the end of the call. And uh, in 17 countries, uh, members have formed national associations. And those associations are working to have collective voice and collective action in their own countries. So we have five goals. Uh, the first is voice and agency for women, youth, people with disabilities, and all marginalized groups. And so today we'll have a special focus on the voice and action of youth. Um, we want adequate community finance. We want to advocate for at least 20% of national budgets to go down to the, um, down to the local communities. Um, we want good local governance. By that, we mean real citizen engagement, real participatory democracy at the community level. And uh, with all that, we should be able to ensure that there are quality public services. And we really want communities to have the resources and information they need to be, uh, to be resilient to shocks and particularly to climate change. So that's a very big set of goals, but I've really been inspired by the ability of our national associations to make serious progress on that. Uh, one of the tools that we've been using um, is the participatory community-led development assessment tool. Uh, today is a milestone in that tool because today the Amharic version is rolling out in Ethiopia. For those of you who can't read, um, Amharic. This is our Amharic version of our CLD tool. It's also in French, Spanish, Swahili, and Bengali, and English. So uh, people around the world are finding ways to spark conversations to uh, really examine their own programs and how community-led are they. Um, so with that, I'm going to kick off our discussion um, on Youth Voice in Action. And I'm going to start it by um, sharing uh, the announcement. We're going to have a youth ambassador in the movement globally. 
and uh, her name is Becky. She's going to sit in Burundi and she's going to link up with the uh, youth led organizations in all of our countries and write up their success stories and uh, really be able to make sure that we amplify the voices of youth leaders across the movement. So with that, I'm going to introduce her to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on wherever you are. My name is Rebecca Irakiza, and I prefer Becky. I'm a student at Trinity College, double majoring in human rights studies and neuroscience. Um, I will be uh, serving as a youth ambassador for the movement for community-led development this upcoming summer. And my interest in human rights studies in primary school, I was part of a human rights club. And since then, I've been doing some advocacy work through conferences with different organizations. And I'm really looking forward to making more impact in advocating for women and girls and youth around the world through the work we do with MCLD. And I look forward to hearing about your stories and everything you are doing, uh, the work you are doing around the world. Um, to make a really meaningful impact in people's lives and lift up voices everywhere. Thank you very, very much. Great. Um, so you will be hearing a lot from, uh, from Becky over this next summer, and we intend to always have somebody who's devoting their energies to listening to the voices of youth, amplifying those voices, writing them up, sharing them, linking them together, to have real peer-to-peer -peer linkages among youth-led organizations around the world. Uh, this is also uh, the week that the UN is having their youth assembly. So I don't know if any of you know anybody at the youth assembly, but uh, that's going on. And um, we'll also be trying to build up International Youth Day is in August, so we hopefully can uh, make a big noise um, on the critical importance of youth leadership during that month. So uh, I know several, I've contacted several of our youth leaders who are on the call today. Um, uh, Berger is with us. Uh, Berger, would you like to unmute and just give us a briefing on youth mobilization in Benin and what you've been doing. So, Beranger? I, are you able to unmute and say hello and speak to us? Oui, hello? Hello, Berger, are you there? Hello, bonjour à tous. Bonjour. Uh, Monsieur Paul, s'il vous plaît, c'est en termes de mobilisation de je ne vous avais dit. So Sarah, okay. perhaps you could you could communicate uh, with Berger. Par rapport à la mobilisation des jeunes, uh, je trouve que C'est un grand travail qui se fait au fait par rapport aux différentes activités que nous menons chaque fois. Euh, je vais beaucoup me baser sur euh, euh, des activités, euh, sur euh, les changements climatiques, euh, les... Oh. qui me concerne euh, spécifiquement. Euh, je vais mentionner euh, le Global Youth qui est une activité mondiale mais qui se fait aussi au, au Bénin euh, par euh, Youth Service Africa durant lequel nous mobilisons des jeunes nous menons des activités euh, Berger des impacts spécifiques oui 
Sarah, could you give a gist of what uh, Beranger is saying for us Anglophones? Oui, Monsieur Paul. Um, Pascal, could you? Would you mind, Pascal? <laughs> Okay, I'll go ahead. Um, Beranger said that he finds um, it. Wait, very I think important. Paul is trying to come in. He will do it. Oh, okay, perfect. Perfect. Yes. Uh, you have to um, click the English channel in order to hear what Paul is saying. Oh, okay. So on the English channel, we'll hear Paul speaking in English. Oh, okay, great. So uh, for those of you who've never used translation before, you go down to the, uh, let's see that more and it should have, oh gosh, I don't see it. Uh, oh, interpretation. So you go to more interpretation and you click English. And okay, so we'll try again. Go ahead. Yes, yes, Paul. Oh, commence encore une fois, Béranger, et Paul va... Uh... Oui. Yes, ma'am. Oui, alors, Monsieur Paul. OK. Euh, je disais que la mobilisation des jeunes euh, a débuté euh, il y a vraiment longtemps. Euh, depuis le lancement du MCLD au Bénin, euh, au, il y a eu vraiment une mobilisation des jeunes, d'où la création de la plateforme des organisations de jeunes pour le développement durable des communautés, cette plateforme qui aujourd'hui regroupe plus de 25 organisations de jeunes et de femmes. Et c'est à partir de cette plateforme que nous œuvrons, nous menons des activités et nous essayons de faire aussi euh, la mobilisation de ressources. D'où euh, le projet avec la coopération suisse que nous avons géré l'année passée jusqu'à cette année. Et aussi, euh, nous courons aussi pour euh, la mobilisation de ressources au niveau d'autres institutions telles que le CNUD et, et autres. Entre autres, les organisa chaque organisation de cette plateforme œuvre pour euh, des activités de jeunes au sein de la communauté. Euh, si je prends par exemple l'exemple de Youth Service Africa, qui chaque mois d'avril euh, célèbre le Global Youth Service Day, qui est une journée mondiale qui œuvre pour la jeunesse dans le monde, qui donne aux jeunes le travail volontaire qu'ils offrent à leur communauté pour essayer de, de participer un temps soit peu au développement de leur communauté. Et pour euh, cette année-ci, Youth Service Africa à penser développer, euh, à penser travailler dans 12 communes dans le cadre de la promotion du participatory CLD Assessment Tools, où ces 12 communes sélectionnées, il y aura réellement un travail très fort qui sera fait sur l'outil CLD, qui sera démontré dans 12 communes. Les conseillers communaux seront 
euh, prises en compte, ils, ils auront à étudier, à comprendre ce que c'est que le MCLD, ce que le MCLD n'est pas. On va les former sous l'outil CLD et on va essayer de faire aussi les pratiques sur le terrain. Comme ils sont toujours en contact avec la communauté, on fera le pratique, les, les pratiques sur le terrain avec l'application de l'application mobile de, du CLD. Donc, euh, brièvement, c'est ce que nous faisons. Et il faut rappeler que euh, depuis la création de la plateforme, nous euh, recevons chaque fois des, des demandes d'adhésion des jeunes, des organisations de jeunes qui sollicitent réellement des adhésions. Euh, le, 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 le vrai challenge de la plateforme cette année, c'est la mobilisation de ressources pour réellement mener des activités pour la résilience des communautés. Merci. Very good. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Berenger. So, um, I, I, I know I had some trouble with the interpretation, but uh, we will uh, also, when we send out the notes, we'll summarize everything that happened for people. Um, I, now, Joka Smate was also going to join. I don't see him on the call. Does anybody see him on the call? Great. Well, thank you, Berger. I, are there other leaders of youth-led organizations on this call who would like to say a few words about what they've been doing in the movement? Um, two things. One person did have their hand up. Now I'm not sure who it was. And also, John, you might want to stop screen sharing. Oh, good idea. Um, well, actually, I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to leave it on because in just a moment, I'm going to go to uh, the slides from Nigeria. Um, but I, I, I can stop it. Let's see for the moment. Um, and Aya, your hand is up. Do you want to say something, unmute and say something from yes. Sierra Leone? Yes, John. How are you? How is everything? Good. It's great to hear from you. Yes, good. So, Sierra Leone, we are doing fine in terms of the MCLA program. So, uh, we are actually, MAFO is actually a youth led uh, agricultural based organization. We work in cooperatives. So, we work with youths. So because of that, uh, we, we always have challenge, you know, young people to work with them is not easy. So here in Sierra Leone, right. we, 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 we are training youth, especially the women, so that uh, they can be self-reliant in terms of in cooperative business. So at the same time also, we are, we are helping them for them to be able to manage the money in a in a in a form of a osusu is also the same way of cooperative. So this is what we are doing. And for the entire youth platform in Sierra Leone, we actually we are members of so many groups within the country. So we are member. We have established MCLA in Sierra Leone. And uh, we are about to register the movement. We have completed our, our, uh, we have completed our terms of reference and also so many criteria for, for joining the group. And uh, we have also completed the constitution that bind us as a group. So, these are the milestones we have done here in Sierra Leone. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the platform of youth, we are, we are members in so many youth-led groups. So, and also, by and large, Sierra Leone, in terms of youth, the youth population here in Sierra Leone is almost surpassed all the population for example, 60% of Sierra Leone population 
are youths. And uh, you have to remember that uh, majority of the youths, they are, the children are just graduating to go to the youth stage and uh, the youth are becoming more larger and larger every now and then. So because of that, and they are kind of, there are some kind of trouble around keeping youths or informing them or working with them. For example, we have experienced drugs, drugs which is peculiar to youths. Drugging is, is actually, I mean, youths here in Sierra Leone. We are about to raise a campaign as to whether, because if you want to, if you want a better society in the next five, 10 years or so, we need the youth. And most of mm. the youth that are going, that are taking the drugs, they are young boys. And uh, we find out that if we empower the, the young guys, how will, will they be in future that uh, they, will, they will left with no option? The few men that will be available, they will not be able to, to accommodate all of them. So there will be a societal problem. So this yeah. is some kind of challenging issue. So we are working around this kind of things here in Sierra Leone. Yes, we are, we are doing well so that uh, we can surmount, surmount some of the problems because they are, they are societal problems and they actually need some rigorous interventions towards that. Yes. Thank you very much. This, this is my perspective about things in Sierra Leone. Hey, thank you very much. It was great to hear from you. And I've, I've, I, you and Lansana and the MAFO team are just doing great work in a very challenging situation. So thank you. Um, okay, I see now that uh, Ms. Palma Ibrahim, you are successfully online, we see you. Um, so we'll turn to the next part of today's call, which is really hearing about the uh, voter awareness campaign carried out by the team in Nigeria. So uh, Ms. Palma Ibrahim, do you want to unmute and tell us, and then I've taken the, the photos that you've sent me and I have them on slides. So when you want me to show them, you just tell me and I'll share them. So over to you, Mas Pablo Ibrahim. Thank you so much for an opportunity like this. First of all, I want to apologize for joining behind schedule. I've been struggling to see how I can join. Our network here is so, so, so bad. I've been yes. trying, so I apologize, I apologize for that, please. And uh, no. I, I want to use this privilege to appreciate most especially on Gapro. I was asked to present out the report of, uh, of the last general election uh, sensitization that we have carried out. And uh, I want to use this medium to appreciate hunger project for giving us grant. The grant they have given us was wonderful. We have utilized it judiciously and uh, it has made a lot of impact. It's not just an ordinary impact, it has saved lives. Because here in Nigeria, whenever we are carrying out election, normally people used to lose their lives. A lot of mm -hmm. family lose their loved ones. So the, uh, the grant that was sent to us by Hunger Project, sincerely, it has saved a lot of lives. And uh, we appreciate Hunger Project for that uh, uh, grant and uh, we want to also ask for more. We we'll ask for more. <laughs> Thank you so much for an opportunity like that. And um, uh, as at the last sensitization program that we have carried out, we have carried out sensitization program in virtually about 13 states across over 100 communities. It, we, we have sensitized people physically over 1 million people because we are 30 different organizations working together. So we, what we did with the uh, grant that was sent to us, we share it among the 30 different groups. So each group went on in the name of uh, a strategic action for community development to carry out the sensitization against election violence. That is pre and post election violence. And uh, when the grant was shared to us, we were able to physically get in touch with nearly 1 million or over 1 million people individual. That is physically. 
well through radio jingles and uh, and TV, we are able to approximately get in touch with over 10 million people. So the grant has made a lot of impact. And um, in Nigeria, that was a presidential election was held on 23rd February, 2023. That is the presidential election, including the National Assembly, that is the Senate and the House of Reps. Well, the governorship election was also held in on, 30, on the 18th March, 2023, across the 36 state of the Federation, including FCT, and 774 local government areas in Nigeria. Since independence, Nigeria has been characterized by a high level of electoral malpractice, that is money politics, electoral violence, and use of ethno-religious in order to influence voting patterns of the electoral. That, that these are some of the strategies that was normally used by politicians to win vote in Nigeria here. They use money, they use religion, they use tribalism, and so many other things. And as a result of it, mostly, it may end up into crisis. So uh, the money was judiciously used by the groups here, and uh, the sensitization was carried out. And we realized most of the reasons uh, I'm sorry, Maspama, we're not hearing you. Perhaps if you turn off your camera, we'll be able to hear you, but we're not hearing you right now. Yes, before he, he can join. Most of the okay. tools that are in order to carry out violence here, they normally. Hmm. OK, the, the connection seems to be bad. Uh, and now he's muted. OK. Everybody uh, send white light to the internet system here. Oh, to... You're muted now. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Good. Okay. So most of the night, you didn't hear me from the inception. Yes, we heard you from the inception. Just the last minute, we lost you. Uh -huh. So most, mostly the politicians here, they use religion, they use tribalism, they use sectionalism, they use uh, uh, other forms to divide Nigerians for purpose of winning the elect uh, election. So, and in most cases, those things end up in religion, cri uh, in election crisis. Majority of the violence was perpetuated in mostly northern Nigeria. Like, uh, according to 1999 uh, report, 2002 report, about 1,848 people lost their life. During 19, 20, 2019 election, about 1,848 people lost their life. Majority of the violence was perpetrated in the northern Nigeria. And Nigeria presidential election that was carried out, virtually it has been considered as one of the free election with, low, with little loss of life as compared to uh, uh, the previous election that was carried out in Nigeria. And uh, one of the factors that helped that is as a result of those sensitization that was carried out by our organization and other sister organization that has the same aim. Because it is not only SACDIC that carried such uh, sensitization in Nigeria. There are other NGOs that equally has uh, carried out this sensitization in Nigeria here. And the successes, we said we, we are able to reach about 1 million people physically. That is by the 30 right. different organizations. Then over 10 million people was equally reached through TV and radio jingles. 
That's wonderful. The, community, uh, the communities understood the use of arms and engaging in violence can stop our, or prevent development in places in our state and country. The turnout was massive and impressive in all form community. We, we try to discourage the voters, uh, the populists from, we discourage them from engaging into vote selling because sometimes as a result of poverty, people will use uh, the day of election to sell their vote. They will just sell their vote and get a piece of bread. So we tell them the implication of it and uh, most of them understand it. And uh, from our observation, we, are, we realize most of the people decided not to sell their vote any longer by understanding the consequences and implication of such things. So, and uh, as a result of that, we, we are able to reach women, most especially those people that have been used are youths. Youths are mostly the target of the politicians. So we reach most of the majority of the people that we, we are able to reach are youths. And we are able to get them from uh, religious places, such as churches and mocks. We went to those places and sensitized them. We even went to marketplaces, youth groups, normally where they normally used to have their meetings in the night, or playgrounds, schools. Uh, most of our high institutions, we went there and met the youth and told them the consequences and implication of engaging into uh, election violence. And uh, it appears most of them understood and understand with us. So if you, as you can see from the few pictures that we have shared, the, the pictures here are so enormous. If you are to share it, it's going to be much. So it's just a few selected pictures that were sent. And uh, as a result of it, we, we were able to, we are also faced with some challenges when we are, about, when we are carrying out such program, we, we are faced with a lot of challenges. Among all the amount of those challenges that we are faced is limited resources. The resources that we had was very limited because uh, even the pamphlets that were printed was not up to the number of people that was reached. Over 1 million reached fiscally and the majority of the Nigerians here, when you print template, uh, uh, pamphlets, majority of them, we want to have a copy of them. If you go to uh, villages, sometimes you see women, they will uh, put those templates in their room for purpose of dressing, uh, uh, decorating their rooms. So everybody will be eager to have those templates. And the templates that we printed was very little. It, wasn't, it did not go round. So it's one of, one, one of the challenges that we had. Insufficient form to carry out the sensitization was also the phone was not that sufficient. And uh, as a result of it, we come out with a lot of recommendation. So among such recommendation is to ensure that institutionalization of democracy in Nigeria is as come out. Firstly, the government at all levels should ensure electoral offenders before and during election are prosecuted so that it will serve as a deterrence to other people that have been carried out such uh, uh, violence. We also call on the government that, that uh, they should be able to effectively train those uh, electoral officers to know the consequences of conniving with politicians in carrying out most of this uh, electoral violence. Because sometimes even the electoral officer, the government official, the security agencies are part of those people that connive with the politician to incite those violence after collecting money from the politicians. And uh, finally, we also recommend that there should be a strict adherence to the Electoral Act. That is 2022 Electoral Act. Because if you look at the law, all that is required has been taken care by the law. It's just that it appears majority of the Nigeria does not acquire, that does not adhere strictly to the provisions of those law, or does not even know the existence of those laws. So there is need for the government to make people to be aware of the existence of the laws and uh, the consequences for breaking such rules and regulation. So in summary, this is what we are able to carry out during such sensitization. Thank you so much. 
So, Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Dr. Rebecca. Thank you, our secretary. And uh, really, this is just a brief uh, presentation. And uh, we really appreciate uh, MCLD and uh, Hunger Project for provision. We tried our best and uh, some of the places like uh, we, we had all over that the election was rigged and all this and uh, it was terrible. So some of the places we couldn't go there because uh, our boundary uh, is not to reach those uh, places, but to sensitize the people locally in our community and uh, the masses. So the ANEC and all those uh, dirty things that happen, we, we are not there. And uh, uh, we, uh, we, we cannot stop such, but at least we tried our best in sensitizing the, the masses. Yeah. And as he stated, all the 30 organizations tried their best. We distributed the money, small, small, it's just a token like 80, 80, a uh, thousand naira for each organization. And some, they spend over, it, it, it tripled that money or even five times. So we added our own resources uh, to, to sensitize our people because we have been doing it even without yeah. any sources. So, but then is, is, is a great boost. Position, all the executive and everybody. So we are really very, very grateful. There are some who are on this call. So if they will contribute, they are welcome. But thank you so much, uh, Barista Maspalma, for this presentation. He really uh, led the legal team and we uh, register Nigerian uh, MCLD, SACDIC, and all this. So we really appreciate you. Uh, yes, it was it was a wonderful presentation, uh, Masbama Ibrahim, and um, I and I, we have a written version of it also that he sent in with even more photos, and we'll get that up on the website uh, right after uh, today. So uh, and you know I also really appreciate the power of your campaign with a with a very small amount of external support. And uh, you know, our, our biggest challenge in the movement is there are all these people now saying they want to support local actors, but they're not doing it yet. And, and so this, I think your success with even the small amount of money will, uh, I hope will inspire people to uh, invest in uh, actors such as yourself who are on the ground, who know what needs to be done, who can mobilize local voices and local resources and make a change. And as you said, just to realize that with this small grant, you literally have saved lives is uh, very, very inspiring. And I, I hope that all of us can use our collective creativity, our contacts with people, um, to really spread the word that there are organizations all over the world ready to stand up for what's right, ready to work for what's right, and uh, with just a tiny amount of resources can do so much. So just congratulations to Sadek and to really to the, to the million people that you reached and the 10 million who heard your jingles who uh, uh, somehow or another prevented so much electoral violence this time. It's, uh, it's a great step forward for Nigeria and for, for really the world at a time when so many are threatening violence. Um, so uh, with that, are, are there any 
of questions or comments anyone has to make before we go to the next part of the call? If so, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. I've seen lots of wonderful messages in the chat of, of congratulations. I hope the Nigeria colleagues will see them. Um, Aya, you're back. Okay, unmute and speak. Since yes, you, thank you very much. In the region. Yes, John, thank you very much for the opportunity. You know, it's a good work that uh, our Nigerian colleagues have done for their elections. So, in as much as Sierra Leone, also, we are our elections is right down the corner. We are going to go into elections in on June twenty fourth. So, we are just thinking of the same uh, ideas. Now that uh, we have completed some of our documentations, we have collaborated with government as to how we can chip in to to synthesize about the election violence. But uh, we are we are also in collaboration with other agencies. But uh, we, you know, this time when elections are in the country, everyone wants to do a synthesization. Everyone, but the message is. Our own message of uh, entering, they are different. So we want to sell out, sell that particular uh, document out. I don't know if we could share with you after the meeting, or maybe we we possibly will have been our meeting, our monthly leadership meeting on the on May second, and after that we will resolve on some kind of issues to move forward to the, pro the program in Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aya. Thank you very much. Uh, Rebecca Gazama, do you want to say something? You're, yeah, um, there you Yes, go. yes. Uh, hello to everybody. I just want to say that uh, Mas Palma has uh, really summarized uh, what we did in Nigeria and uh, it went wide and it covered the country really. And uh, But I just want to say that uh, we don't have to suggest and we don't have to wait until when election is just around the corner and then we start to work with youth and people um, uh, at all. We could, that will give us a little impact. I know we have got a lot of impact in this, but it can be better if we start early and make it like part of part of our lives in the country, working with youth, especially education must continue initiatives that works with uh, youth and uh, students in colleges, especially victims of the yes. injustice. Uh, it, yes. it, it, yeah, it, it will be nice if we develop a pattern of continued training uh, and synthesizing people about peacemaking, justice, you know, staying out of trouble, especially among you. I know the Education Must Continue initiative really made a lot of impact in some of the areas where we are in Yola and Lhasa and Chibok. But I think we can, we will appreciate if uh, uh, Hunger and uh, MCFD can continue to give us more support to continue keeping, I mean, to keep in touch with youth, youth on, on good behavior and citizenship. Yeah, good point, Rebecca. I know there's there are, so many um, Nigerians living in the United States who would love to know your success and who would probably want to support it as well. I, I, I know there are diaspora groups who could join in uh, contributing to your efforts. I'm hoping that we can figure out ways to do that. Certainly, I will, I will share your results with everybody we can. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to find, to partner with you in finding resources for each national association. That's a huge challenge. It's a big goal. Um, we are, it's, it's certainly one of our very highest priorities um, in this country. And I hope in many more countries can help support, financially support the national associations because small amounts of money go so far and you have really proven that point. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. So, me, so any, anyone else on this subject of preventing election virus violence? There's so many elections coming up this year and in 2024. 
I think this will be, your example will probably be followed by many other countries. Okay, so I'm, yes, Rebecca, you're back. <laughs> Go ahead. Did you wanna say something else? You're muted, Rebecca. Okay, I guess not. Oh, go ahead, Rebecca. Did you have some, Rebecca Gazama, did you have something else you wanted to add? Not really, I think it was a mistake. I wanted to get down my, get down my hand. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I had already lowered your hand, so um, I can do that again. Bingo. Okay, so um, thank you all. Let me jump now to the, uh, screen share and jump to the next slide. So, Sylvester, did you want to say something? You want to unmute and say something? Yeah, <clears throat> good afternoon. Good, good day, everyone. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, please go okay. ahead. Yeah. First of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. Rebecca Dali for bringing um, uh, this organization to Nigeria. She, she stood by us. She stood firm until when this organization stood firm. We, I want to say thank you. I want to thank The organizers in the United States will say thank you for the support and uh, giving us this opportunity to make our community a place, to, a better place to be. Mm. Uh, we, we, we have 30 organizations that are working on different thematic areas. There are organizations are, that are working on human rights since from inception to death with, with funding or without funding. There are organizations that are working on peace building. There are organizations that are working on livelihoods and economic and livelihoods. There are organizations that are working on different thematic areas uh, uh, that comes together to form this, uh, um, this uh, uh, movement. So we, 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 are, we, are, we remain indebted to Dr. Rebecca. And we say thank you and uh, we're soliciting uh, if you can support us more, uh, we, can, we can make our community a very good, better place to be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sylvester. I, I could not agree more, both mm -hmm. in your appeal and in your gratitude to Dr. Rebecca for, for championing the creation of uh, this movement in, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. It's just... Um, Wonderful, she has a gift, and we appreciate that she mm. has used it in such a good way. So thank you, Sylvester. Mm. Yes, I just want to comment. Uh, uh, thank you, Nemsek, uh, Rebecca Gazama, who is doing great with uh, education, must continue supporting a lot of children, including the Chibwa girls, and uh, Sylvester, who is our, our proposal officer, he was the one who wrote the proposal. So uh -huh. we have a lot of wonderful people. And I think even if you give us trillion dollars, we can ut utilize it in Nigeria <laughs> and distribute to all this wonderful <laughs> organization. And uh, also, uh, I think uh, it will be good. Uh, we can we can have a, a firm uh, person uh, who will be on the ground there. I I was so uh, not uh, uh, uncomfortable when I'm away and they are doing all this campaign. Although my my organization did it, but it's not like I am there. So. We are working on it, and uh, uh, we are really. I'm really thinking of finding someone who will 
be there uh, on the ground because I am now here in the US and as a US citizen, a pastor, I cannot uh, put my leg there and my leg uh, here. So, but I'm really very grateful for, for the team. And thank you, John, for, and Anne, Pascal, and all who contributed. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again, Dr. Rebecca. So uh, uh, I think this is a good segue to the next conversation I wanted to have. I know that um, I'm going to throw up yet another slide. Uh, okay. So you have seen this slide before. This is this co-creation process that all of us are in to create a new organizational structure globally. Um, and the goals, the overall goal is to fully establish this new values-based organizational structure that is inclusive, accountable, transparent, and fundable at much higher levels by the end of this year. And I, um, in, you know, different national associations have registered themselves under the law so that they can receive and mobilize money and use it and steward it properly and be able to report on it. Um, and was able to mobilize people to lead the, uh, the movement in domestic resource mobilization. But I wanted us to realize that, there's also, that there is also global resource mobilization that can happen. That is, many of you know people who know people, who know people, who could fund your work. Oh, Mate has arrived. I, I will, he was going to speak earlier and I'll give him a chance before we end the call. Um, so we, in, we have now in the US, MCLD is now a tax exempt charity on its own. So people can give money to MCLD in the US. If they're US, they can get tax deductions for those gifts. And then those gifts can uh, support activities in your countries. So if, for example, if there are ni ni people that you know in Nigeria, um, in America, who are Nigerian, who want to support organizations in Nigeria, um, we can help facilitate that. Same with Kenya. Another way that we've discovered is, for example, Steve is here. Um, uh, Steve just told me that he, one of his best friends from school is running the office of the Rockefeller Foundation in Africa. Wow, there's an opportunity. So even though you're, you are not, uh, individually wealthy, you are wealthy in friends. And those friends can come together. And, uh, you know, they've always told me that the first step in fundraising is friend raising. How do you find, educate your friends about the work of the movement, find who they know, who would like to be a part of this as a financial supporter. And uh, those people are, any, everywhere in the world. There are people from your country in every country in the world. So as a global family, as a global movement, we can reach these people, inspire them with the power of local actors to, to improve the lives and save the lives, as Rebecca Gatsama said today, of people. So this is our, our mission to organize ourselves <clears throat> into this new inclusive organization that can really generate the kinds of funds that we can put to good use and that we can report on responsibly so that um, we are seen as a powerful force for good in the world. This can be done and each of us can play a role in it. Um, so I really invite you to think creatively about this to look at how people that you know, for example, 
I, I have a call uh, later today with people in Haiti. As you know, Haiti is in a terrible shape right now. They, their government was overthrown. They're overrun with, with uh, gangs. Um, so people cannot travel safely, but they can get on Zoom calls safely. They can stand in solidarity with each other safely. They can reach out to people in the US who are, who are from their country and, and get support for their activities. <clears throat> so this, um, this is something that we can do together. I'm very excited about the possibilities. It's what I want to devote myself to um, as we move forward. So I please do, um, you know, and I loved hearing Dr. Rebecca Dali about your, your proposal writer. It was very well written, um, you know, and I know that we can write more proposals. They can be brief. Um, they can go out to more people. And uh, now I feel like I'm in a real good position to get them out to different people in this country. And then we have colleagues in Europe, we have friends in Europe and Australia um, who can also hear about your work and support it. So that's the plan for um, solving this challenge that was raised. You know, we've seen what we can do with a small amount and with a little bit more, we can do a lot more. So I am not sitting on a pile of money myself, but the world has money and the world should be putting its money into your hands uh, because you are such good stewards of those gifts. So let me um, just pause for a moment on that. Um, the next, and uh, um, oh, I wanted to share one more thing as a resource. So one of the interesting challenges uh, that, um, and I will, that uh, is, you know, there are these international NGOs and the international NGOs um, want to more and more shift power to local actors. And so uh, one of the people who you've heard from before on these calls is the um, Peace Direct organization. They work on peace building only with local actors. So they have a lot of expertise in this and other groups do, but they've recently published this little brochure to help INGOs transform to uh, from the role of doing it all themselves to, to these nine roles that the INGOs can play um, as interpreter to understand how the donors work. You know, the donors, even though those of us in the donor countries can't often understand their language, they can be a knowledge broker and help get you the information you need. They can be a co-learner with you as you learn how to mobilize resources. They can be a convener to bring people together. They can connect you and strengthen the ecosystem for community-led development. They can be an advocate for you. They can be a watchdog on bad things that happen and convey those to global authorities. They can be a critical friend and stand in solidarity with you. And I, I love this one. Uh, international NGOs can become a sidekick. That is, they can put you in charge and they can support you. So these nine things, I was very excited to see these pretty pictures in this little brochure. We'll send, we'll share a link with it to everyone. But many of you know international NGOs and some of you have been frustrated by your relationship with international NGOs. But um, I see Caitlin's on board here, the call here, representing a network of INGOs that wants, that really is part of sh shifting the power. They're a member of, of this movement. Um, I had a call this morning with similar networks in um, around the world. So as a family of civil society, the more that we can stand in partnership with local actors, the faster this will happen. Caitlin, did you want to unmute and say anything on behalf of Interaction on this score? Hi, John. Can you hear me all right? I can. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so so briefly, um, thanks for inviting me to this call. Um, 
I, from, from my perspective, um, I work on the children and youth front. So this meeting is particularly pertinent to me. Um, but in recent conversations we've had across our coalition and across our sector working groups, um, one, one theme that's been at the forefront is shifting power, um, particularly finding ways to meaningfully engage with young people and make sure they're at the forefront of these conversations because as we know, everything is affecting youth and young people. And we really wanna equip them with, you know, the resources and skills to really take, you know, autonomy of these issues and, and, and really, you know, bring solutions that work best for them since they impact them most directly in a lot of instances. Um, so, so one thing I'd say is just interaction is a resource for all. Um, being a coalition, we can bring a lot of folks together from, you know, various stakeholders from the USG to, uh, multilateral institutions um, and so you know really if you have ideas or uh, resources you want to share with our broader coalition um, I'd be happy to, to facilitate that as well um, so thank you for letting me speak for a moment um, and inviting me to this call um, but yeah I can drop my email in the chat if that's of, of help to folks sure. and when she says USG she means the US government you know that big oh. entity <laughs> sorry about um, that yes oh, that's so, um, and now I, you know, one of the first people who volunteered to be a speaker on the power of youth today is, uh, is Jokas Mate, who's actually now on the call. Um, and before we hit the end of the call, uh, would you like to speak? Would you like to unmute and turn on your camera and say hello? That's, I guess. Uh, let me try that. And any luck? Any luck, Jogas? No, not so far. Well, can you unmute? I guess not. We still have technical problems. We're gonna, as, as in addition to raising money, we hope that more people will get be able to get better internet service. <laughs> I don't know what the movement can do about that, but we will do everything in our power to make sure that that we can connect with each other and be be together. Um, so then, the final part is upcoming events. Um, um, and do you want to say? Uh, what's coming up in terms of the leadership meetings? Um, well, we have a couple initiatives this year that we're working on uh, in terms of our umbrella strategy. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, be in touch with me and I can share it with you. And um, <clears throat> we're, our two focus areas this year are um, storytelling a uh, storytelling initiative in collaboration with Collective Change Lab. So uh, if you're interested in getting involved in that, it's um, storytelling for systems change with a focus on non-Western ways of telling stories and also a focus on the fact that the telling of the stories and the hearing of the stories uh, is as important as the stories themselves as a way for people to collectively come together and change systems. So we've got some great, really substantive uh, content from um, uh, Collective Change Lab and Pascal was able to go to a storytelling meeting for multiple days uh, recently. So he's our resident expert on this emerging thing. So if you're interested in the storytelling, let me know. We're, we're getting it together. I've heard from some of you already and I have your names, but if you haven't, let me know. The second thing is we are focusing on um, uh, building out a collective leadership um, uh, initiative with Barry Shelley, who I think is on this call with the Collective Leadership Institute, which is based out of um, Germany. And, you know, collective leadership, it's a couple words, it sounds familiar, but the idea is that traditional top-down leadership, uh, you know, bossy, um, making all the decisions, et cetera, that's one kind of leadership, but there's another kind of leadership, which is a collective leadership where people collectively move forward together. And the leadership is often, um, distributed throughout the collective 
um, but it's not, you know, leaderless. Uh, Barry has a lot of great materials on that. And so we're looking to develop an initiative there as well. So if you're interested in that, um, let me know too. We have our monthly um, leadership development calls. Anyone is welcome to join those calls. If you're interested in that, let me know. My address is Ann, A-N-N, at mcld.org. That's all. Okay, thank you, Ann. And, and really, thank you, everyone, for all that you're doing. And it's just such a gift to me to be your partner in this and to get to hear your successes. Um, I will do everything in my power to support you. And um, I'm sure that's true for all of you, for all of you. So um, thank you. I will be sent, will be sent, Sarah will be working on our newsletter to share this with a wider audience. We have about seven, 8,000 people now who get our newsletters and we'll hear about your successes. Um, so keep tell, sending people to the website, keep telling them to subscribe and uh, let's keep building up this movement. So with that, um, we're at the end of the call. If any of you want to unmute and say goodbye to everybody, now would be the time. That's our tradition. So thank you and really have a great month ahead. Mm -mm. Goodbye. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Well done. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 It's been a wonderful time. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, greetings from Uganda. We are saying hello as we are done with our first day of developing policies. With me here, I have somebody called Nixon or Chatfrey. Uh -huh. Joanna, they would like to say hi before you guys sign out. So this oh, is okay, good. Uh, hi, Matthew. Hi. Huh? Hi, Hi, Nixon. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Hi. Great to have been able to join you in the last minute. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so nice to see you all. Great to Thank see you, you so much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Nigeria, and we are really grateful to be part of this group. Well, you're you. great. Merci. Merci, Paul. Thank you, John and Sarah. We will have a global meeting one time so that we will meet together and hug each other. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Hi everyone. Bye. Bye. No problem. Uh, Sarah. Thank you. Hi. Thank you so much.